Good evening, every good evening, everyone. Chris Grandy. It's 8:47. I've got to leave in 20 minutes to go meet up with a friend who's leaving town for good. So this is going to be a short video, and I don't have time to do all the fun stuff I usually do, like shooting um, ducks wrestling with each other to, the, to the Irish tunes. Can't do that tonight. Uh, just want to get to the point. We've talked about this all summer. You can look at all my videos. Um, market looking kind of funky. You remember our thesis, which uh, you know you know from my influences. Uh, you know, my personal thinking and my influences, guys like Bill Fleckenstein, who have who've been right for 30 years. It just kind of, you know, sometimes takes them a little bit longer for their ideas to come along. And some other uh, thinkers like that, that this market is running on fumes, that, uh, you know, that uh, when they stopped the, the uh, stimulus, some bad things would happen. Things were slowing down. We talked about zero to uh, revenue growth companies. We talked about all kinds of stuff that that's been happening in the markets that didn't make sense. Well, now, now, now things are starting to make sense a bit. And you remember my video from a couple weeks ago? I, you know, I, I asked my the question I asked was, you know, would would Disney, um, this is Disney now, would Disney's um, earnings disappointment be uh, a major factor in the market? And Disney fell. Now Disney was up pretty strongly this year, but now it's it's uh, it's over 22 percent off its high. So it kind of stinks when you make all that money and then give it all back. Especially if all of a sudden everything else you own, let's say you didn't own just 100% Disney, let's say you also own some Exxon Mobil, and then you lost, uh, you know, 30% in the last uh, since October. Uh, that kind of stinks. And uh, you know, let's just say also that uh, you know you thought your Apple was doing great, and then this happened, and you lost 30% in the last. It went from 134 down to 105. So things are just starting to kind of blow up, and now people are thinking, well, remember we talked about. This was way one of my newsletters from way back. It might even not have been a non-video one about buying the dips and the O S H apostrophe, you know, uh, uh, you know, blank blank moment that Seth Klarman. Actually, that was in my uh, firm newsletter. Seth Klarman, noted hedge fund manager, he said, "What's going to catch people in this market is the O -sh moment when people, you know, you buy the dip, you buy the dip, you buy the dip, then you buy the dip and it doesn't work, and then you try again, then you try again, and all of a sudden you just overexposed yourself and gave back three years of gains." That might happen to people. Now, today, we've had such a, a rapid decline in the S&P 500 in the last couple of days. This is the S&P 500, just the, you know, the U.S. index. Here it is right here, and then, pew, we just dropped, you know, from the high here about 10%. Um, we've had such a drop that it's possible that the market bounces on Monday. But, you know, um, if you remember, uh, we talked about references to 1987, you know, when, when people were just so exuberant and stocks were priced really high on a, on a valuation basis and no one thought it could go down. We've mentioned Nifty 50 in so many newsletters, these magical stocks which included, you know, Disney and Apple and Netflix, you know, and all these guys that is Netflix that were doing great 129 down to 103. Man, you hate to be the last one to buy into that, huh? Lose yourself 20%. I mean, these guys made money. And what's happening is they're probably still hanging on. So, you know, stocks like Netflix are still in an uptrend. See this green line still going up. However, so this market could give back a lot and still not, um, you know, still, you know, and some of these great stocks might still be in an uptrend. The problem is, you know, Netflix gives back 30%. Guys who bought here are still in the money, but a lot of these other stocks are just getting bombed, like Exxon, like I was saying and such. Um, that's not a stock. So bottom line is all the lot of stuff we've talked about is starting to happen. But remember the thesis. I'm going to leave you with this, okay? Uh, well, two things I'll leave you with. One is we were positioned conservatively. We own, we own dividend safe, you know, what we consider safe payers like Verizon, Pfizer, Healthcare REIT, okay? You know, Healthcare REIT, Verizon, Pfizer, which, you know, I just didn't think these guys were going to do much. Pfizer finally gave it up on Friday. It held up pretty strongly. We, we dumped half the position a few days ago, and then we took a, a you know, then we, we lost the rest of our options on Friday, but it was risk managed. So, we kept our, our, our losses limited. Other people are exposed to unlimited losses because they don't have a risk management plan in place. So uh, that we also short exposed um, by way of some people are short the S&P, some people are large, uh, larger clients, aggressive clients are short BlackRock um, and Akamai, which I was just kind of pushing on Friday. And also uh, a lot of clients are short just by owning treasuries, which do well in panic time. So a lot of our clients are exposed to bonds and treasuries and and uh, you know that I feel like the Fed's not going to raise interest rates. So we're going to stick with some of these dividend payers on the long side. Um, CVRR, which is our refining company, even though oil, okay, oil is down big, 
that people don't realize, and I hope it holds up. If it doesn't, we're going to have to put some risk management in place. But here's oil, Woo, right? Um, CBRR is a refining company. It's one of Carl Icahn's businesses. It actually makes more money when, when oil prices fall because they buy the oil, refine it into gasoline, and sell it. And gas prices are falling, but not as fast as oil. So they're buying oil pretty cheap, and they're reselling it for a pretty good margin. And uh, so they're making money and paying a very fat dividend, but uh, they're starting to kind of get, get swallowed up in the overall market downness here. So we may have to put some risk management in place, unfortunately. But um, we are keeping things tight. And, you know, with the market's been down 10% or so in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we've, we actually, I think our clients are up a little bit, especially our aggressive clients in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we also have exposure to gold. We took a small position because... Gold is still in a long-term downtrend, as you can see here, but with people realizing the Fed is not going to raise interest rates, I think they're FOS, folks, that's full of, you know what, um, and in that case, they realize, well, if the economy is not strong worldwide, all the central bank is going to have to start printing money. I mean, Japan's already in, you know, prints money, but they're going to really push it to hyperdrive. The U.S. is going to have to do something accommodative, and Europe, same thing. So when all the paper money in the world is getting devalued, you know, you got to start going. You got to start going to real asset type money, and gold finds favor. And remember, you know, there are people in the world that really like gold as money. And the Asians and a lot of a lot of people in this world think of it. Uh, they don't trust paper money like Americans do. You know, we love paper money. Think it's the most wonderful thing in the world. But man, there's a lot of countries that don't have so much faith in in, uh, in, in pr um, paper printed by their government. So um, we're just keeping our eye out for that stuff. We have a little bit of gold exposure, which has done well the last couple of weeks. We'll see if that holds up. And, uh, you know, we've got bonds, we've got conservative stuff, and then we also have dividend payers. So remember the thesis, though. I don't think this is the fall. I think that uh, we're going to correct here. At some point, we're going to have a, I think, a rip-roaring rally. It might even come when if Janet Yellen or somebody comes out on TV and whispers some soothing words. But we could fall back to the October lows here. And... And uh, at that point, maybe you'll see these Fed guys panic and start talk, trying to talk the market back up. But I think the market will rally a little bit at that point, but it's not going to really move, really move back up anywhere close to where it was unless they actually come out and say, we are not going to raise rates and then follow it up with, we're going to start buying bonds again. Because that's what I feel like they're going to do. And so we'll see if that happens. But remember, this, this is only step one. The market falls. I don't think it's going to keep falling. I could be wrong, but I'm not, you know, and we're positioned for that, but... Um, I think we'll get a rally. So the market could fall a bit here. All right, it could just fall. We could get a rally. Off maybe Janet or somebody saying something soothing. And then after that point, um, I don't think we make new highs. I don't think we get above the old highs here, but anything's possible in this crazy world. And then we, the real correction starts once people realize that, hey, you know what, the Fed is just, uh, uh, they, you know, they did, they're doing this for six years and we don't have a recovery. So what's going on? And we've created enough, uh, um, you know, as far as jobs go, my opinion on that is I believe there are a lot of good high-end jobs available for the top 10% or 15% of, of people with the skills. But in the overall economy, most of the jobs I'm seeing when I look at the jobs report are service jobs, healthcare mainly, uh, like long-term care nurses, like healthcare aides who make 15 bucks an hour, waiters, massage therapists. That's at least 75% of the jobs. And then you get a few software programmers, which are real jobs. Mining and oil are losing. Those were... 100k a year blue collar jobs which are just evaporating so folks i don't know what they're looking at but not looking good now the nikkei was up a lot higher earlier it's trying to get back a bit this s p tried to rally so i'm gonna look at this again tomorrow morning see if i need to change any or, or change around any of our plan but we're very conservative right now i'll keep you guys posted if you have any questions let me know sorry this video ends up being about nine minutes but you guys want to know where things are at and i gotta tell you and there's only so much i can say and I'll finish up with this. Last fall, I issued a mea culpa because I thought this was the start of the fall. Right here, this is October. Okay, right about this point. Oh, excuse me. This was October. All right. October, the market was down pretty strongly right here. Here it is on the one year. This is a one year chart. A lot of stuff going on on the screen. I'm sorry. One year chart. Here's the October down uh, right here. And I thought this was the start of the correction. I thought we'd rally but not make it up like what I'm telling you now. We did make some new highs. We got back over the old high here of 2016, we had 2134. But look, folks, we're back there again. So I'm going to rescind my mea culpa now, calling this the top, unless I see some new highs set. So I, and I said, oh, gosh, you know, I made a mistake. You know, I, maybe I was just off by a few percent, but 
this is not looking strong, folks. So I, I, I'm going to rescind my mea culpa and say maybe I was right, not beat myself up for it and say, you know what, uh, markets are crazy sometimes and can be nonsensical longer than we can stand. But uh, let's see what happens. So keep your eyes posted. If any of you are not clients of mine uh, and I don't manage your money and you've got 401ks, I don't think it's a bad idea to, and I've mentioned this on Facebook and I've mentioned in my videos before, to reduce some risk. I don't know how you want to do that. I don't know your account, don't know your personality, but um, nothing wrong with a little bit of risk reduction. Um, I just like I said, I don't think you're going to lose much by reducing some risk. Like if markets aren't going to shoot back up 20%, you're going to be, oh my gosh, I wish I'd, oh, why did Chris tell me to you know, reduce some risk? I could have made that money. I don't think that's going to happen. But um, anything could happen, like I said, but I would be advising to reduce some risk right now, um, although I do expect a bit of a rally, and maybe on that rally you could, you could really reduce some risk. But for now, folks, just keep your eyes out there. Again, this is just helpful stuff. Um, do what you want. You have to follow your own advisor's advice or what's going on, but uh, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me a message or call me. If you want to talk one-on-one, -on -one, it might be uh, better to talk to you then. All right, have a great night, folks. We will talk to you soon.